Hello and welcome to a new edition of Planet Waves TV. This edition is for Tuesday, the 11th of January, 2022. My name is Eric Francis Compolino, and uh, I did not transport all of my recording gear to the local diner, Broadway Lights, where I usually do these recordings because it's 14 degrees out, and uh, I'd rather be here with uh, my information on my computer screen and all, all of that stuff and, uh, and, and near my printer. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your positive feedback on, on recent editions. Please do. I never say this. I'm not, you know, all these YouTubers are like, please like and subscribe and all this stuff. So yes, everything counts these days and counts for a lot. All right. So um, in this edition, I am going to, um, I've got my little um, cheat sheet here. I'm going to be covering uh, Mercury Retrograde which um, take which starts on Friday, today's Tuesday, so in a few days, full moon on the 17th, that's Monday, sun moving into Aquarius on the 19th, that's the following Wednesday, and then uh, and then everything else that um, that that uh, might come up uh, on the shovel, as they say. Okay, so uh, first of all, I was doing the chart for the full moon, and. Um, Okay, let's uh, go wide angle here. Um, and uh, you can see that purple line that I've drawn. That purple line goes through the lunar nodes. And th this is... Um, uh, and notice all the, all the planets are to one side of the lunar nodes. And the only thing not to the other side, not to that, not to that one side, but to the other, is the moon. Uh, th the... Uh, th th first of all, the sky is set up for an extremely rare condition that was in effect part of last year as well, called Kala Sarpa Yoga, sometimes called Kal Sarpa. I, I had not seen it uh, that way. If you're interested in a discussion of Kala Sarpa Yoga, uh, I suggest that you uh, check out the recording of uh, me and Melanie Reinhardt. That's also on our YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, just click through to our channel. The shortcut is planetwaves.tv. And we do get into this Kala Sarpa uh, condition of, uh, of, of the sky. Now, the thing about Kala Sarpa is you can see the moon is, um, where is the moon? Uh, the moon is uh, up there. So an anytime you're in Kala Sarpa and any of the classical planets go to the other side of the nodes, it's not Kala Sarpa anymore. So therefore, when when there's a Kala Sarpa condition, uh, the uh, it's it's only it's only in effect for for two weeks out of four weeks. It's only effect because th the moon is going to cross its own node every every two weeks. So the thing with Kala Sarpa is all the planets to one side of the node. And what's interesting is that in the in the current arrangement. Not, not only are all the classical planets to one side of the node, but almost all of the minor planets that come up in this fairly, uh, you know, stock chart, but I put in everything I can possibly put in uh, to it, almost all of those are, uh, are, are to one side of the, of the node as well. And the only thing, yeah, so uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. And when you think, think, of, think of having everything to one side of the node is, the karma is out of balance. It's putting huge stress on the lunar node uh, because it's putting all the weight to to one side, and um, the the you know that's that's a lot uh, that's a lot to bear. Now the lunar nodes are a thing that people wonder about frequently, and they're one of the hardest things to read. And so you need to, to in, in a sense, teach yourself how to read the lunar nodes, uh, but by uh, by practice and experience. And not uh, rely too heavily on the interpretations of books on the nodes in the signs and houses, though it's worth knowing that it's it's also an easy way to be prejudiced uh, about them. And some of the interpretations in books are pretty nasty about what the nodes mean and, and signs and houses, particularly uh, two houses two eight and and um, and and Scorpio Taurus. Uh, so uh, we're actually ab about to enter a Scorpio Taurus. 18 month phase of, of the nodes moving and I'm sure that over time I'll have um, I'll have more to say about that but one, one of the ways to read the chart objectively is just to look at the you know look what's going on with rulerships and therefore if the nodes are in Gemini and Aquarius as they are now 
just take a look at what's going on with uh, with Jupiter and with Mer Mercury, and you start to draw inferences without coming to heavy judgments about what is um, what is going on. Uh, this is going to be the theme of my forthcoming almost a year late how to read your own chart class the new the new the new version of that which is how to read your own chart without dumping heavy prejudice onto your chart and how to escape the the judgments of um, astrologers living and dead who uh, can often be quite um, heavy-handed in in their interpretations and in particular i find the entire kind of neoclassical school of uh, of astrology to be quite heavy-handed in their uh, interpretations of things, and um, they, they are uh, they they tend to be a bit fatalistic in 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 the style of certain forms of of classical astrology. Uh, so anyway, um, let's go let's go with a, a rundown of the very concentrated forthcoming week, and remember that anything that we know about. That we're charting, we meaning we who are interested in astrology, students of astrology, as uh, William Lilly called us, um, are um, once we're aware of, of something happening, and, and that thing is happening fairly imminently, you can say that it's in effect now and the effect is going to strengthen over time. And this counts with uh, pretty much everything that I am going to be, uh, be, be describing uh, th that's uh, manifesting at the moment. So first thing, uh, Mercury is about station retrograde on Friday the, the 14th, uh, and that's uh, something that happens three times a year approximately uh, for about 21, 22 days. So it's th basically three weeks, three times a year, depending on when the retrogrades shake out in the year. The, the common characteristic, as you'll see in some of my tune-in readings of all the Mercury retrogrades in 2022, is they start in air signs and they wind up in earth signs. Uh, so in the case of the current one, we have Mercury about to station retrograde and it's already retrograde um, in, in this chart, but it's very close to the position uh, that it, uh, of, of the retrograde, uh, which is it's going to start in Aquarius and then it's going to work its way back through a conjunction to Pluto. Well, Mr. Pluto is going to work its way back through a conjunction to Pluto, hook around Pluto, station direct, make a second conjunction to Pluto, and then go back into Aquarius. Uh, that, uh, that, incidentally, is a, uh, a pattern similar to what Venus retrograde is doing. Venus station retrograde a few weeks ago in a conjunction uh, to Pluto. It made two exact conjunctions to Pluto, and then... Uh, on, on March 3rd, which is a very big culmination point of 2022. We get one quite early this year. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of events concentrated around that um, um, Mercury, Venus, excuse me, Venus Direct, the, all kind of coming home to roost around March 2nd, 3rd. So keep that time in mind. I'll, I will go over those charts again. Uh, I think I've done it somewhere in the Tune In series. Uh, I will go over them again as that time approaches. Uh, it's it's only about six or six or so weeks out, but again, we're we're under the influence of that. So one 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 interesting parallel between Mercury retrograde and the current uh, incarnation of that, and Venus retrograde in the current incarnation of that, is they both involve making a bunch of conjunctions to. Pluto. And so when Pluto is involved, things get deeper. Uh, there's, an, there's an increase in intensity. There can be an increase in the fear level. Uh, and where, because Pluto, Pluto evokes death, change, transformation, and, and a, a diversity of forms, and this tends to make monkeys nervous. Um, and uh, right now, the planet is um, acting like a bunch of uh, freaked out, nervous, uh, nervous monkeys who can't keep a grip on their, on their emotions or their brains. You, you you know people believe in evolution, but really most humans are just monkeys running around with clothes on. So the, the proof proof that the theory of evolution is not true is how little evolution there seems to be. Okay, so these 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 conjunctions to Pluto uh, are uh, in, they're intensifying. They 
Uh, they are they are demanding a revision of thought and emotion and uh, of, of some kind because when you put Venus conjunct Pluto, you get this kind of death and resurrection of the the Venusian principle. It's also l- deep and, and lusty and uh, and challenging in that respect. <coughs> Mercury conjunct Pluto is requiring deep introspection and analysis and psychological analysis. But with both of these aspects, there can be that also running out of control thing going on. Uh, and it, it can be uh, it can be quite uncomfortable. Mercury retrograde, meanwhile, is confusing for many people. It's um, it's it's disorienting. And the Mercury retrogrades are becoming more intense as we... Um, as we venture into the world of uh, total domination by technology. So Mercury retrograde is really about the relationship between the mind and technology. Um, if, you know, anyone wondering why, uh, you know, you're, you, you, you could ascribe your computer or disk drive crashing to Mercury retrograde and then also ascribe um, a, a check, nobody writes checks except planet waves anymore, but um, and we write a few too many. But uh, to losing a check in a magazine, right? It comes in the mail, and you're expecting the check to come from wherever. This is a typical thing that would happen with Mercury retrograde. And then you have to get a new check, and it delays everything. And then six months later, you flip open the back of um, some magazine, and it's stuck in there. Okay, so how does it, what does that have in common with, like, your car breaking? Well... The thing that has in common is consciousness. The thing it has in common is the mind. And the, 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 without the mind, without consciousness, without sentience, there is no astrology. There is no technology. There is no anything. And so the thing to watch with Mercury retrograde is the relationship between consciousness and technology, whatever that technology might be. Okay, so... Um, this is going to happen, and uh, it, because it's happening so soon, uh, it means that we are in uh, what what some people call the Mercury storm phase. So the um, the Mer- the Mer- Mercury storm phase is when Mercury is moving under a certain number of, uh, of of degrees a day, and right now Mercury is less than one degree from the place where it's going to station retrograde. We are definitely in Mercury storm phase. That uh, that term was popularized by Jim Chavon, and when I asked him about it, uh, he said he, he, he got it somewhere else, but he doesn't remember where, and nobody else remembers where. So at least I, I went back to the pl- place, uh, back to the person who popular, popularized it, a wonderful uh, astrologer who I believe is no longer living, and he was one of those guys who was just a, a really good friend of um, of me and of, of Planet Waves, and um, we, you know, we we often saw things in a similar enough way to be able to communicate, but in a different enough way to make it interesting. And by the way, while I'm on the topic of Jim Chavon, he's the one who wrote the predictions of what was going to happen for the election of 2020 when um, it was going to hang in the balance by a couple of votes and we wouldn't know who the president was for a long time. That was Jim Chavon. And um, one, one of the really great moments in, in predictive astrology uh, in our lifetimes, and that was about a Mercury stationing direct in the last degree of Libra on election night. So if you, have, if you ever find anything that Jim Chavon wrote, I'm not sure there's anything on Planet Waves, but if you find anything anywhere else like Mountain Astrologer, or somewhere it's worth reading, uh, because he he really did have a clue. So all apropos of where we get the term Mercury Storm. Now we call it Mercury Storm because things are stormy, things are uncertain. There is uh, uh, there there is um, uh, a, an important planet representing consciousness, changing direction. So I think of Mercury storms as um you know maybe you've never ridden the Staten Island Ferry or any other big ferry boat, but imagine the ferry is pulling into the slip and the the pilot has to aim the, the ferry into the slip and you need power to move a boat that big into the slip. It doesn't get there by accident. But right, right as it's getting to the point where you want it to dock, you have to throw the engines into reverse. And as a kid, I always loved watching the water from the Staten Island Ferry from the upper deck looking down because there's current, 
there's the there's the boat moving forward there's the water being displaced by the ship there's the forward thrust and then the pilot slams the whole thing into reverse and all the water starts going the other way and it's it's great fun especially if you like water and um that's kind of the feeling of uh, of the um of the mercury storm now mercury shadow phase by the way the another term popularized by jim siobhan in an article called mercury shadow mercury storm at some point like 30 40 years ago um, is when mercury is in the degrees where it will be retrograde in the future or was just retrograde most recently so that's why the three weeks leading up to mercury retrograde feel kind of mercury retrograde why the three weeks after mercury retrograde feel Mercury retrograde, and when you're looking in total, this turns a uh, a, a three-week uh, process of Mercury retrograde into a nine-week, approximately eight nine-week process um, of of, um, of 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 shadow phase, storm phase, retrograde phase, storm phase, shadow phase. All together are about two months. So we're now three weeks into that two months, and. Uh, you know, this happens a lot, it happens three times a year, about half the time, even though Mercury is retrograde only about 23% of the time. And for you who fancy yourselves proper students of astrology, I had a one of my bookshelves collapse, so I'm, I'm missing my uh, <clears throat> little juicy book of planetary phenomena there is a an awesome book well i'll pitch it another uh, another time written by mickelson the inventor of computerized astrology okay so uh this is what's going on so pay attention my general advice for mercury retrograde is uh, don't waste money cut back on all your spending now's not the time to buy a lot of cryptocurrency now's not a lot of time to liquidate your stock portfolio and put it into silver dollars and stash it into your mattress and all that stuff it's time to just chill out and um, and um, observe and and be more risk averse, be more cautious. There's an unpredictability factor that does not lend itself well to taking unusual risks of any kind. Um, we sometimes have to, but you don't always have to. And you know, as an astro astrological counselor, uh, I w will often tell people, well, see what you can delay. Put it off at least past the second Mercury storm, and usually you you can do that. Uh, you, you you might not want to say that you're doing it due to Mercury retrograde, but depending on who it is, you you can. And um, e either people uh, love and respect you, or they they don't love and respect you, and uh, that's unlikely to change anytime soon, one way or the other. Okay, so that's Mercury re retrograde. Now Mercury retrograde ends on February 2nd. So it's retrograde from 114 to February 2nd. And um, uh, so keep an eye on that whole thing and use that to, uh, to, to plan your, your timing. Okay, the next big uh, event is the full moon in Cancer on 117. Uh, this, this full moon is... Um, this full moon is a this full moon is something of um, an unusual thing because, like a lot of things that are happening, including Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde, Pluto is directly involved. Pluto is directly involved in the form of the Sun being in a conjunction to Pluto right there, right at the time of the full moon. The moon is way over there. See, that's the only thing on the other side, just about of Kalas Yoga. So the so the the it's a Sun Pluto conjunction. Then there's going to be a moon opposition. I hope you can see that. Can you? Yeah, there you go. To the to to the um, to the Sun Pluto conjunction. So once again, all the things that Pluto does, it it makes more intense. It brings in a transformational factor. It pushes things to the edge, and most of all, it demands growth. The problem in our society right now is that there are a lot of people who refuse to grow. There are not many adults in the room in the best sense of, of the word adult. Right now, there are a lot of people who are, in my opinion, getting off on panicking and getting off on using their panic as a way to attempt to control others. Uh, this is pointless, it is ridiculous, it is unhelpful, and it is driving the world 
now fairly well past the brink of of tyranny. Now, now it's a question of how much tyranny do we get, not whether or not we are in in tyranny. And we're going to get we're going to get as much uh, tyranny as we have fear to be free. Uh, to, to be independent of external authority, you have to, first of all, be responsible. And second of all, you have to be courageous. And you have to be willing to work for, for the, the freedom that you want. So the people who are willing to give up their freedoms for a little safety, who deserve neither, in the words of Ben Franklin, uh, are, are t- tend to be lazy. Uh, they, they're not interested in thinking for themselves. Uh, they they are not interested in challenging any narratives, and it doesn't help that certain social platforms are censoring things left, right, and center. Um, I'm planning on uh, doing a um, interpretive reading of the rules of this particular social platform for covering the particular issues that we know get people in trouble. And and if if I read these rules, it would probably take me half an hour to read them out loud. There are so many rules. And so uh, this is an example of authority being ex- externalized and people, in a sense, r- risking their fortune for telling the truth. Why do we, why do we put up with this? And, and I don't mean why do we put up with it. I mean, why do we, not maybe you or me, throw rocks at people who are interested in f- finding out uh, what, what lays underneath a claim or a statement of someone. So this is all by way of saying that now Venus, then Mercury, and then the Sun and the Moon are all going to be doing big things in a conjunction or opposition to Pluto. And that is saying growth. That is saying deal with it. It's saying get real. It's saying be truthful. It is saying get to the bottom line with yourself. It's saying uh, don't deceive yourself. I mean, the Pro- problem with uh, the, the the problem with deception is that in the in the first instance it's about self deception, which brings me to another topic. Did that look right? When it's bright out, I can't really see this little teeny screen, but you can see that I've circled in pencil the conjunction of Pallas or Pallas Athene uh, in Pisces in a conjunction with. Uh, Neptune in Pisces. So it's nep- quicker planet first, Pallas Athene conjunct Neptune. And um, uh, this is in a uh, five arc minute conjunction. It's a very, very close conjunction at the time of the, of the full moon. So Neptune, uh, is, Neptune is about some wonderful things. You know, it's uh, strawberries and champagne in, in the uh, presidential suite of the Plaza Hotel. Not necessarily luxury per se, but the fantasy Romantic fantasies, fantasies of all kinds, um, dreams and um, music and inspiration and art. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a um, I'm I'm a very Neptune person. And if you uh, take a look at my desk, I've got a lot of Neptune things around here, and I've got my all my art supplies. And uh, I'm I'm not sure that I can here. Let's let's tr- let's try this. So I'm a very Neptune person. Uh, hopefully in the most positive sense of that. But if you look in my uh, living room, you'll see, look at all those guitars. And then then I like to, you know, smoke a little weed and play the guitar and I wear pink glasses and soft warm colors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's one side of Neptune. The other side of Neptune is delusion, addiction, um, uncon- unconsciousness, um, uh, lapse of attention, believing your own press release, uh, denial. So it's D, a lot of D words. Drink, drugs, delusion, denial, deception. You could go on and on with, with the D words. When, when, when Pallas Athene, the goddess of law and politics, is conjunct Neptune, which it is, well, we then apply all the drink, drugs, delusion, denial, deception to Pallas Athene, which is the asteroid of the very sigil of pow- power and law and government in the official structured sense of, of those concepts. And so we are experiencing incredible amounts of deception and delusion uh, as a result of uh, this, this world condition, which is being taken advantage of by world leaders to mess with you. 
And I, I realize there's people who think that, uh, well, no, they really are good. And uh, Tony Fauci, he's a, here, I'm doing this. Tony Fauci, he's a pediatrician. He loves babies. Yeah, you know what he loves about babies? To inject them. And, um, and oh, oh, well, mass grave. Uh, unless we get real about these bottom line facts of life uh, that, that are extant right now, we're not, uh, we're not, we're not going to get anywhere. And so uh, Pallas conjunct Neptune is saying, you might want to, um, you know, I think, how, how did Shakespeare say it? How do I lie to thee? Let me count the ways, says the United States Center for Disease Control or the Environmental Protection Agency, or the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Um, we are being lied to. We're being lied to all the time. Any public official you see speaking from the podium, in all but the rarest cases, is lying. Would you like to play a game? Email me a statement by a public official to efc at ericfrancis.com. That's a good one for this. Uh, and I will and and put a subject header. Is this person lying? And I'll write back and explain to you how they're lying. But you have to be gutsy for this. You have to have knowledge. You have to not only read but read critically, read comparatively, work from experience, confirm against your senses, and not be lost in your own head trip of delusion, drink, drug, denial, deception, delusion which is the, the nature of, of Neptune. And, and it's, um, you know, all, all of this makes me more nervous than I'm letting on. Closing up with one last thing, coming up against my 29-minute limit on this camera, good thing for that. Um, Kalasarpa Yoga. Now, what is it about when all the planets are to one side of the lunar node, besides everything being on edge and fragile, and there being many things that must actually be processed before evolution can take place, what that usually leads to is some form of a fall, some form of some form of a fall, or uh, a reactionary condition against the past. So one of the uh, ideas of Kala Sarpa Yoga in the natal chart in Vedic astrology is that, and this is passed to me through. Um, well, it's passed to me through the teachers of Callie Halverson. Maybe some of you remember Callie Halverson, her star, feminist astrology, good friend of mine, passed away years ago of, uh, of ovarian cancer, but we were buddies. And she would, uh, well, James Braha was her teacher, and she would pass on to me bits that she learned from James Braha. And one of them was a, uh, an extensive teaching on Kalasarpa yoga that I was pr privileged to have. In my, in my usual style of getting my uh, education by interview with the masters, uh, and said that it's a reaction of the, against the events of the previous lifetime. So if you have Kalasarpa Yoga, which means you've got all of, all of your classical planets from Rahu to Ketu, not from Ketu to Rahu, but the other side of the lunar nodes, then it's good to start to find out actual details, triple verified, Triple verified past life details, in my opinion, as an investigative reporter who covers GE and Monsanto, you need triple verification of any claim of a past life. Something, something. If you're curious about this, write to me. Um, but what was the immediately prior lifetime? And what is what are you doing now as a result of having been through that in that previous lifetime? Okay, uh, please like, please subscribe, please pass forward. Please spend a little money at Planet Waves. i uh, got to pay a lot of people to bring you this uh, wonderful, uh, well, to, to weave these uh, yarns for you. Okay, uh, Kate in Ukraine, in Kiev, dodging the jab. Um, thanks for processing this, uh, this video, and um, I'll catch you again ASAP. There will be a new StarCast today, starcast.fm. Uh, and also, I'm planning a new uh, Planet Waves uh, FM, hopefully somewhat less despairing than I was in the first segment of last week's program. All right. Thanks for listening. With love. Bye for now.